first play. Cool. Hi, it's nice to see you, Rita. Uh, what I've said to everybody so far is that um, if you don't mind being seen um, by a amount of people, you can press unmute and then you, you might flash up on camera. If you don't want anyone to know you've been here or you're ever present, that's fine. Just stay on mute um, because this gets put out to people and I can't always keep track of it because it's not unlisted in private. So, oh, it is unlisted. Yes. So, just don't come on if you don't want to be seen. That's fine. So, um, I was also saying I don't usually do morning masterclasses. I've done a couple before, but um, don't usually do morning ones. So, it's quite nice to uh, see everyone in daylight. <laughs> um, and today, it's quite exciting for me because I've been running like online courses for ages and um, Recently, I've, put, I've smooshed two together, which is about Mind Your Money, which is one I've run for a couple of years, a year and a half, and Life on Purpose, which is about finding your purpose. And I realised that you actually need both to do both, because you can't live on purpose when you've skint, and you can't be skint, and you, and you make money from finding your purpose. So I've smooshed them together because... I couldn't make everybody buy both courses. So um, what I did was just did it all in one. And then if anyone was wanting to try and I've made, them, I've made it a really great amalgamation, which is great for anyone who's already done them. I'm, I'm telling you this because this is kind of why I'm doing the masterclass. So I'm just telling you a bit of background, really. I won't bang on about it too long because I want to teach you some cool stuff. But um, And so the more I've worked and the more I've done, um, wealth and prosperity and abundance is it's imperative to living on your sole purpose because you can't do that when you're worrying about where you're going to live and how you're going to pay the bills and your next client and you're worrying about money and all these things it's really hard to live in sole purpose when you're worrying about all that stuff and vice versa to live on per um, to um to make money it's the easiest way to make money is to do it um with your soul alignment it's the best easiest nicest way to make money in all honesty, and um, or be prosperous or however you'd like to call it. Um, I say prosperity because it's not just about the money. It's about more than that. It's about life prosperity. It's about seeing, seeing all the magic that life has to offer. And that includes wealth, I, I truly believe, because without wealth, I don't really, I don't, money doesn't, bring me up or down but I do love what the freedom money brings so I um I like the energy of money I like to be kind to money if any of you have seen my um my random videos about being nice to money because it's not otherwise it won't be nice to you it really is like that um I'll share them again they're quite just took like funny videos I've been putting so um so um Finding purpose is amazing. Making it work for you is kind of the next level. And that's kind of what um, my purpose is, is to help people actually live the life they're meant to live. Um, so, because I kind of had all the training. A few years ago, I, I was an EFT practitioner, Reiki master, Pilates instructor. I kind of took all the trainings of things for me that changed my life. So Reiki changed my life as did EFT and matrix reimprinting, NLP, and uh, Pilates changed my life, believe it or not, because uh, I had terrible pelvic and lower back pain, and Pilates, I thought, well, I'll just train in everything that's helped me, and then I'll, I'll, I must have it sussed by then, and the biggest problem was I didn't, I like had all the training, and I was, so I was a Pilates instructor, so I love this, but this isn't the thing even though I'm great at it and I, I mean I generally just was if you like innuendo that was mainly my Pilates classes were generally <laughs> uh, generally to women and we had an absolute laugh all about and, and through um all about mainly sex talk to be honest you know innuendo the whole time um because we had to sit on balls and things so you can imagine the hilarity of all that but uh um and I loved it and through and through um the beauty was when we all had lockdowns <laughs> I did it every day for people because, and actually what it did do, they turned up just for connection. I was like, God, oh, but I'm doing this for the, because I want to help people, but do I want to help them lose weight and have nice backs or do I want to help them in a, a different way? And so I actually only just stopped teaching Pilates in um, 
November because the other side of a business was really coming on was helping people out of narcissistic relationships was helping people in different ways doing different things but still it wasn't my thing and I was helping people and I was doing really well but I was like oh but it felt it felt forced not forced as in it just felt like I was having to try hard um and that's not a problem trying really hard but you know I always you know then I had like the imposter syndrome came in like who the hell am I all these kinds of things and I was first of all helping people with back pain through EFT and tapping and things and then I went into helping people lose weight because I've got a history of um, anorexia and bulimia and things but I'll do that so I can do that it was all great it all worked but it wasn't quite there it was like living in my excellent zone if you've ever read the big leap you know there's a zones of zones of competence and excellence and if you were it's very well used my big leap book uh, it's a really good book um and it, it explains it quite well and very easy to understand um and so my zone of excellence was was i was living in it but the zone of like genius and alignment and kind of oh do you know what's the zone of magic that's what i think it should be called it's this magical zone where you are just living this, what you were here for. It's about remembering why you came here. It's not about learning it or finding it. It's a remembering. If uh, That's how I feel about it. So we came here, we made a decision to come here at this time with the people who are our parents and our family. We came here for a reason. And then we have spent most of our life trying to find it. And the sooner we find it, the sooner we get to live on purpose and have amazing lives personally um and I think with the world as it's been we have a we have almost this incredible opportunity where like literally the cards have been thrown in the air <laughs> and we you know every life has just been given like whatever do you know what I mean nothing is everything's nonsensical so you might as well make your own sense of it all anyway so I feel it's a current life rather than a lot of people are finding it really tough I think it's what a gift to be here now when anything goes, you know, you can, you know, you're not crazy for like, you know, think, you know, being an energy worker anymore. You're now like the norm, you know, what people now, you know, that's just normal. And I was talking to my mom, who's also an energy worker. And she was like, yeah, 20 years ago, I was a fucking kook. You know, everyone was like, no, I was mental. Everyone like avoided me. And we had these like covens that we used to meet. Like it was really like that even 20 years ago, we were back in Inverness. And she said, I had a community, but it wasn't something you spoke about, you know, with your mates down the Amdram place. It was something you had to really be careful um and my dad always said oh you're going to zog tonight you know really derogatory and now that wouldn't be okay you know so it's amazing what we where we're living right now but it does make it I think can make it a bit harder to find your thing because anything goes now and um I've, I've spoken to a few of you before about really tuning in to what it is you're here for not just to heal people because that's but that is amazing um, most people I work with, that's their their thing is they, they're here to serve. I mean, I think we're all here to serve, but but it's a case of okay. So how is that by leaning into the, the your purpose actually enables you to prosper? The reason it is, and the reason it does, is because that's what you're here for. But you have to allow it. And the biggest problem with anybody who's got these gifts is getting paid for them. The, the biggest 100% problem is people getting money for being amazing. It's, it, it's like the most insane thing. If you were a doctor and you'd been to university and you trained, you'd just get someone else to charge you. But it's like this massive block. It, it, I mean, I, it comes from ancestral trauma anyways, which is wound is one side of it. There's, there's so much in our ancestral history that says that healers really shouldn't get paid and if you've got a gift you should just share it which you know there's even memes from all these different people saying well you should just share it and give it to the world I'm like no I don't agree with that I agree I believe that actually you've got this beautiful gift and it should actually fund your prosperity because whilst you are in lack and whilst you're struggling you might be helping everybody but when you're not helping yourself you're not really as useful you're not as helpful if you're worrying about everything all the time and you're not able to go and get a massage and you're able to go on holiday and regenerate because 
when you are um, somebody who is here to help, whatever that may be, whether it is you're a, a dance teacher, a yoga instructor, an EFT practitioner, aromatherapist, a tantric dancer, whatever it is that you do, if you are here to bring, so if you've got a gift, you have a divine, like not even a right, but it's a, you know, the universe needs you to be using it and to actually be very, very prosperous with it. And, and how, I mean, how, how that looks to you is different. So some people want three mansions, two holiday homes and 25 cars and servants and not servants, but people working with them and housekeepers. And my, my daughter keeps calling people servants. She's definitely from upstairs, like a couple of hundred years ago, honestly. She just, she literally, when anybody does, are you my servant? No, don't call people servants. They're waitresses down and they're there to help you put shoes on. Like they're not, she's absolutely hilarious because she just definitely has all her old language. But yes, it is quite she's old it's fine she's really old <laughs> um yeah, she definitely talks to me like I was definitely her handmaid at one point you know what I mean I have to feel like I should curtsy to my daughter sometimes <laughs> honestly if you met her she's called Constance and she's very much Constance it's really funny <laughs> it's really funny anyway um so what <laughs> um so um like I said it's a bit of my so a bit of my reason why I'm so so passionate about it is because I was so stuck and I had all the tools and I had all the gifts and I was like I know what I've got it now I've trained I'm here I'm ready but fuck now what and I tried and I, I really tried I was like right like I said I did back pain did weight loss I did narcissistic relationships because so, well I just got out of one of them I could help people do that so I did I was like yeah but I'm not really loving it and so and then it, it kind of the and then I did, so I did my um, relationship, one of the first of my very successful programs was um, Relationship Detox. I went, this is it. Because on that Relationship Detox, people came for all sorts of reasons, but they found themselves. They literally, they made these changes. And yes, it, it's because they signed up with me, but it's because of the time they chose to invest in themselves to dig a bit deeper. And I was like the vessel. I don't say I did it because I was the vessel for helping people do it themselves. But it was a magic. And I thought, this is it. This is what I do. I, I get to inspire people to change everything. And that's my purpose. And it's not me being big headed. It's just that I can't help it. And sometimes it feels really uncomfortable telling people your purpose because it's like, you know, and one of my one of my clients is a confidence queen. And she's like, oh, sometimes I just cringe because it just sounds really up my own ass. I went, well, be up your own ass. Then someone's got to toot your horn, haven't they? But if it's not going to be you, who's it going to be? You know what I mean? So, so she calls herself the confidence queen. She's going to go random. That's why I call myself some really crazy things. It's like, you know, it's, because it's incredible. And so when you really lean into it and get really uncomfortable with like tooting your own horn, take that any way you want um then it's um then it's it's kind of you know people will not like you um there's another book up there the courage to be disliked really good book <laughs> by the way so um a difficult quite can be a difficult book to read but it's a really it's okay that people don't like you because then the people who do resonate with you and go oh yeah she might be a bit of her ass but I get I get it like she does, she inspires me. So she might trigger me. And I know I trigger some of my clients quite a lot, but that's okay. And I just say, you're welcome. <laughs> and that's fine. <laughs> but um, I am genuinely here to help inspire people in whatever way that may take. And sometimes it's not, you know, not in the way that we think to actually change their own lives. But not only that, do it yourself. I'm not here to do anything for anyone. I'm literally here to, to show you what you're capable of. And that to me is just like why I get up in the morning other than like five o'clock building Brio, Brio um, trains currently. Um, but I'm very good at that too, but that's not my zone of magic. That's just my zone of excellence. So I, I don't have to do that as a job. Uh, <laughs> and, and also when you're doing something like I said, what do you do for a job? I'm like, oh, I don't really do a job. I just am. This is, I just am and this is what I do and who I am is, you know, um, Lucy B is kind of what I've been and who I am. It's kind of what I what what I do it's not like oh, I better work today oh, I'm gonna do that now it's like so my whole life is integrated around everything that I am and so I don't say what do you do well I said well I am this is what I am not what I do and when that mentality comes in you kind of know you're getting there um but how you get there is through 
really getting clear on what's stopping you. Um, and anything, PP, um, so I'm currently doing quantum success code, which has been really interesting. And tomorrow we're actually going to be very, very brutal with our beliefs. We now have come to, we know our beliefs and we're there and we, we've lived with them. But it's a case of actually just saying, I'm done. That might be a belief I've lived with. That might be something. And when I talk about beliefs, it's like things that you just do. Um, I think a lot of people know what I'm talking about. But beliefs um, are things that can also come bite you in the ass when you've done all the way. You think, you know, I thought I thought I was fine in November last year. I thought, I'm done. I'm Look at me. I've like totally healed. I genuinely thought I might have a few things come up. I'm pretty good though. <laughs> so when that happens, the universe goes, I think so, love. And that gives you a whole um, a load of other interesting things to uncover, which has been an incredible journey for me. Whilst I'm helping other people journey, I'm also journeying, but it doesn't have to be painful. But it does get to be incredibly fascinating. And if you just allow like the honesty and the delving in, it's... It's a really incredible process. And what it does is it stops the panic and the worry. So if I even went into an overdraft now, I genuinely wouldn't care. It wouldn't even, because I know it's gonna be okay. Because I know that of course it's gonna work. And, to, and it's not just like head in the sand at all. It's like, well, it's an utter faith that I'm on the right path. The total undenying faith. And some people call it God, universe, Allah, Buddha, whatever you want to call this, this utter knowing that you're on the right path, whatever you want to call the thing that's bigger than all of us, the thing that connects us and, you know, that makes us all actually part of one source, really, whatever you want to call it, I, it doesn't really, I don't think it, I think it's all the same. Um, and, but at the very centre of all that is you. And it, it's not a case of, oh, I trust the universe to help me. It's like, do I trust myself enough? Am I going to have going to back myself enough for the universe to meet me? Because you can pray and you can come on, help me, universe. But if you don't do it yourself, it's really not going to meet you because you've got to take that leap, take that utter, ah, I'm going to do this before you get it meets it, it, it meets you halfway and it helps you up but you've got to back yourself and the way you back yourself is overcoming everything you think you know about yourself everything you thought that was that was true so how you've grown up and it goes I mean we, we go delve really into so when, when any any course I do any program I do the biggest we do um we go into stories all the stories we know about ourselves all of them so and we kind of hash them all out. What do you know about yourself? What was your family told you about you? Where were you born? Like, as in, what level were you, were you born in? One, two, three, six? What number were you born at? Because that will make a difference to how you see the world. You know, you, you might have had a, a shared experience. But that's not a shared belief or a shared reality. So your experience of life is totally 100% individual. And, um you know, if you, if you speak to your siblings um, about their experience of your life together, I would pretty much bet that it's not the same, but that goes for everything. So every single thing, time we see or experience or come into a way of being, we're seeing it completely differently to everyone else. So we have to understand that everything that we're seeing and experiencing is all our own perception and our own belief systems choosing to see it as it is. So every single thing you see, you can either see as a good thing or a bad thing or just a thing. Um, but every, even opportunities. So we don't open ourselves up to the possibility of living on purpose if we've got all of this baggage, all of this stuff that's stopping us see the possibilities. So if we've got a belief that, well, nothing good ever happens to me, it really wouldn't matter what was thrown in your face. You probably wouldn't see it for what it really was. So to, to create and to really get purpose so in your soul you know what you were here for where it just sings and life becomes easy it really is breaking down what you thought you knew and the more you've done healing work and the more you've maybe become practitioners or you've 
done loads um <laughs> loads of um training and things you're getting closer but there's a there's a part of it that can't come from a book that can't come from training that can't come from oh, i'm really good at that because being really good at something isn't it it's it's something else that when that literally when you hit that sweet spot it's like the easiness happens and then you've got to <laughs> And then when that happens, you then got to stop sabotaging yourself because it feels too easy and then you make it more difficult again. So um, you're like thinking, well, this sounds like a fucking boatload of crap, doesn't it? But it's not. It, it, it can all happen. And the first of so the first thing to. The first thing in order to to have abundance in life is to focus, is to go right inside and get very, very clear on what you actually believe about yourself. Get really clear on what actually you desire in life. Um, I remember someone asked me, I just had Max, so it was what, about four, five years ago. Someone asked me, so what makes you happy? I'm like, uh, well, I'll think on it. I'm like, God, that is sad. Or well, what do you want out of life? I'm like, just sleep uh <laughs> I don't know like food sometimes you know I didn't have much of an expectation um, um and actually I didn't really feel that worthy of much anyway I was just and um so if you've got younger children it can be very difficult or if you had older children they think well that's well that's what I did so now what do I do or you know there's an, often an expectation that isn't even yours or an obligation that isn't even yours and if you have had a really tough experience so because I went through eating disorders and well, I've been through quite a lot, the expectation was I would help people with mental health. I'm like, but that, that was an experience I had in order to be who I am. That's not who I'm here to help. And it was real kind of, oh, what are you ashamed of your head? I'm like, no, I just, that's not why I'm here. I'm here for something different, but that got me to see it. So it's a case of really tuning into yourself and getting really honest with yourself. And it's something um, that more recently has happened. I think I probably wasn't being that honest with myself. I probably wasn't really looking at myself. And I was actually in Greece in May, which is not, not, as long, not very long ago at all. Um, and I have my darkest night of the soul. If anybody's have that, had that, you think, what the hell? I'm just going to die right here. <laughs> it's all going to end right now. And I, I was there, I was up all night. I actually just ended up looking in the mirror and was saying all the things I actually deep, deep down when I cracked open my insides, what I truly felt. And it was the most awful things, but my gosh, the most powerful experience because I was able to understand why I was stopping myself and why I was, why I felt not good enough, why I was not worthy to help people, why, why I felt like a fraud all the time. And it didn't stop me doing it, but it did stop me putting myself out there probably as vulnerably and as honestly as I am. Um, and that's not me crying all over the place. That's being vulnerable as in sharing without worrying about what people might say or without looking a bit weak. Um, and it was the most profound thing was just cracking open and just seeing. And it's not something I did alone. I then, I then got some help with it because it's like how do I unpick all this and that that's the thing and I'm not saying everyone has to go through that either but we do need to dig really really deep into uh, our reason for being because when we get there we get to create abundance and prosperity um, so stories and our beliefs are just are the kind of the beginning of unpicking why we are where we are. And then we have to, so as, as everyone, like I can't go through today or how to do it all. That's when you come and work with me, hang on. But when you come and work with me, that's when we do all that. But, I, um, but with through EFT, through journaling, through these are ways in which you get to your beliefs in your history through working with, an energy worker. Um, I've worked with lots of psychotherapists, therapists, psychiatrists. I'll tell you, I've had it all. If I even had electric uh, shock treatment when I was 16. So I've had probably every type of therapy you can have. And the one therapy that works is when it's energy, energy work. That's to me, that's it. There is no other because talking about problems 
just makes it worse. So um, that's my opinion only, but I have from someone who has experienced every type of counseling, therapy, I've even had REM sleep therapy, art therapy, I've had everything. I was proper mental as a kid. So I've had everything, same problem. I remember being, being jovial, but I was really sick. I was really sick with um, suspected psychosis from being very underweight for a long amount of time. So I was really ill and they, they wrote me off. Um, and what changed was um, I went to see a crystal healer and a Reiki therapist and that changed everything. Um, and it was later on I learned about EFT, but if I'd had that, I think I'd have been absolutely nailed and it'd been great. So EFT, um, I'm not the only person in the world who does that. So I'm just saying that's one thing I teach and I teach it in a very way, a way that you can actually completely quickly get rid of all this heaviness of all the beliefs you're holding on to and the reasons why because um when you do EFT and then you do field work so either quantum matrix whatever you want to call it you go in and you just go and get you literally just go right I'm done you just shatter it all shatter the bubbles of um, belief systems and you get to not live them anymore but we are creatures of repeating patterns you might, if you look at your life, there'll be things that you always do. Now, if you've had difficult relationships or you've had uh, tricky children or you've had uh, alcohol, exercise, whatever, if you've ever had anything that you know, you've fallen off the wagon, you start it again. The, the most common one I would say is alcohol and uh, food and uh, I like bad boys kind of thing. That's, that's the general, I, I've always picked these men. This is what I do. It's just a pattern and it's just a belief and you just, that's all you're doing. So you, you get to break the pattern and change your belief you then don't do it again you stop doing it you stop creating it um, and once you understand the relationship you're having with anything um, and that relationship includes yourself it includes money it includes everything because um if you look at any single if you like if you were just if you were the you you, know, you are the universe but if you were there just floating around and you never came into contact with anything or anyone you would have no problems, right? Nothing, nothing will be a problem because there's only you. That's it, you're floating around in the universe, not seeing, hearing, doing, meeting, anything. So the only, okay, no worries, Katie. <laughs> I'll see you tomorrow. So the only, um, the only reason we have a problem or things come up is because we have a, a relationship with something it's just interpersonal relationship anything be it a house food a dog a person you know whenever we create something where we, we co-create anything and that's also if you think your heart and your head and your gut I mean you can also have these massive arguments internally with everything as well so once you get yourself in alignment you can then create alignment out with them um, outside you as well um but when we are trying to create a life that we desire and yet our beliefs are telling us we don't deserve it, that's not who we are, people like us don't do that, you are literally doing this the whole time. And yes, you can absolutely be super successful and have all these negative beliefs, but that's why people hustle 60 hours a week because it's shit, it's hard. It is hard when you are fighting yourself to create magic. The best thing you can do is give yourself the gift of, of just letting it all go. And actually, you know, um, and when you let it all go, that's also letting go of people that have hurt you, of anger, of resentment, of um, blaming yourself. I mean, the things that will keep you very, very where you are is shame and guilt, things like that fear and if you are <laughs> depending on how you see the world at the moment there's a shitload of fear going on everyone's afraid of something right now and fear um is an incredible way to keep yourself safe so when your subconscious gives into fear which it can do so easily it's not a it's not a blame thing um you you literally revert to keeping yourself safe so, um, like, you know, we've had it, like I said, we've, we've, we've been under the cosh of fear for about three years now, and it's not stopping because we now know what's happening, don't we, with all the energy prices. And the, it's a massive amount of fear that's keeping you very, very much at heel um, for whatever reasons. But if when we actually choose not to experience that or choose not to bring that into our lives, which 
when it comes to money is just like, so what I have to, I have to now work, I have to work hard, I have to do more, I can't do less, because if I do less, it's going to beat me. And there's this huge panic. Um, it's like when you think, oh my God, how do I pay the rent? Well, you just know you will, and you will. But when we panic about paying the rent and we focus on the lack of not having enough, which is where a lot of people, what most people do, I would say, you create that. And you'll often find if you have this perpetual cycle of just having enough, that's also like a safety of just having enough or I'll always be OK. But that's quite a big, stressful thing for your body to be going through. Um, so when you can tune into yourself, trust that the way you're living is totally on point you know that will be okay. That isn't something you need to worry about. Therefore, you eliminate the need for worrying about it. Um, the very, very, the base, I mean, the processes I have used for me and I've used by hundreds of my clients is, is really getting clear on what you want in life, what you desire in life and tuning in, which you're going to do, I'm going to do a little bit of it today, tuning into yourself with all those desires. Because the minute you tune into yourself with all those needs met, you don't have to come up with your blocks and why you can't have it. So I'm going to do it just to show you, just to give you a bit of a few things to work on. It's get, it's also getting rid of everything in your world, be it visually, be it um, energetically. Um, it's like a real kind of detox or declutter of all the shit. So um, the process I use for that, it, we just, I mean, I'm quite. Um, I'm not, an, an, I'm not, I'm not dirty, but I'm quite untidy, but it's not, but I, if ever I see anything that reminds me of a time in my life that I wasn't happy, I get rid of it. If I, I got rid of a load of tea towels. I remember, remember my mother-in-law gave them to me. She's a right cow. And uh, I really like the tea towels, but I'm getting divorced from a crazy lunatic. Um, hope nobody sees this, who knows. Oh, I could do that, that in court. But um, anyway, so, um, and his mother was like the bane of my life. She'd come into my house and we'd go through all my drawers. And she gave me these tea towels. Oh my God, what am I doing holding on these fucking tea towels? Every time I look at them, I go, oh, every time. And you'd be, I'm so shocked still I can find stuff. I think, oh God, that makes my brain go there. And when I go somewhere where I don't want to go or to somebody who gave it to me, I can't get rid of that because Auntie Jane, she's dead now. So if I gave, if she gave that to me, oh, well, I don't even like it. So literally the amount of mental energy that goes through looking at something you don't like, and then you have to justify why you keep it and why you can't, and that'd be bad. And you think, oh my God, just get rid of it. The Literally. So um, one of the weeks I do is this mass decluttering, not of just stuff, but of like of energy that's not what you what are you holding on to I mean the the art of letting go I'm reading a written I'm reading a really cool book at the moment which is have anybody, anybody read that really cool um I love reading books like that because it's always different ways you've got Florence Shin who's got like 100 year old really cool affirmations and things but basically it's any which way you can let go of, of what isn't serving you and it's like this has to be done a lot and every time you get stuck, it's like, well, what do you want to chuck away? Shave your legs. I don't know, like cut your hair. Anything that isn't serving you has to go. And as you kind of go through your ascension, through your own, like finding your purpose, creating this life, more stuff will come that you need to get rid of. And that comes down to friends. That comes down to makeup. That comes down to those clothes you bought because you thought you might get into them it's like people hold on to clothes um from 10 years ago because they want to be that weight again so what if you did turn that weight again they had to wear shitty old clothes what would be the point so sometimes i remember the weight loss thing some people didn't lose the weight because then they'd have to wear the clothes that i know it's really nuts but they had all these clothes there i, think, oh, I don't really like them but i've got to keep them because they're a size 10 you know and I, I want to have like an um, aspirational clothing you just think, no, but be, feel good about yourself now. That's it. Like, now is it. You might die tomorrow. Now is it. And so when we start realising that now and get rid of what isn't serving you now, because by holding on to things, you're, oh, believe it or not, you're creating this. Well, I better hold on to it because, well, why would you? Because you could always buy new ones. So what's the reason to hold on to something that doesn't serve you now is because you don't think you can get it again or you won't be able to afford it again or that's a waste 
or what would the Somalians do whenever I left any food on my plate what would the Somalians do? and I genuinely have never met a Somalian ever and I got to worry at the age of 13 why not finishing my spag bol because somebody in Somalia might like my spaghetti it was a really bizarre I don't know if anybody else grew up like that but my dad would say well the kids in Somalia are starving I'm like still don't want to eat it <laughs> it's not going to make me want to eat my spaghetti yeah it was really so we've got some really um it, it it's a case of um, the, the lack and you, you get a lot of it around food. Um, I notice it with my kids a lot because kids are fantastic teachers, but, you know, finish it up. Why? I'm not a dustbin is what my, you know, why? Why would I eat something when I'm not hungry? So I'm going to abuse my body because you put too much on my plate. That's a bit weird. You see, it's like these, that's not only a belief, it's also a sense of lack. And it's also a sense of, well, there might not be another meal. You know, so you've got to, you know, and, and it all come, and you know, my, my stepdad thinks, oh my God, you can't leave that bit of the strawberry. What have they, it's a, we're not living in ration books anymore. Like we're not, I have to tell myself, it's not, a, you know, and he's, he's lost his short-term memory. So he's like very much, oh, that's such a waste. How do you let your children get away with that? I'm like, you know, it's, we're not living in this, like, this poverty and if you live in that poverty mindset by god you never get out of it the best way to create more money is to whatever is in your bank account is to live like live like it's a million and that can feel like that you know it is to assume it's already there because to the assumption that you are going to create it because you've got these aspirations and these dreams, you've got your what, what you desire and why, you know, you're getting rid of all the stuff standing in your way. Why wouldn't it happen? So living with it, well, better not, you know, living in lack only creates it. And it's, it's a real, it's counterintuitive because of how we've all grown up and things. Um, so I know I'm, this isn't how I, again, it's not how we usually do it. I'm not sure I'm going to do any more masterclasses. So I'm going to, I want to really kind of give you everything I can. Um, am I going too fast? Anybody, everybody understand where I'm at so far? Is everyone kind of on board with it? Okay, cool. Um, um, the next thing I always tell people about is, your, is um, that, that when you get all these things and you start to experience amazing things, you start to do things <laughs> to bring yourself back to heal. So, we need to open ourselves up to the possibility of exponential happiness and abundance and the capacity for it. It's just key because I don't know if you've ever done this. So um, you're there and you're eating really healthily. You're, um, if, you're, if it's a food thing, I'll do a couple of different um, examples. So you eat really healthily, you're loving how you're feeling, you're juicing, you're not you're having alcohol, you're like exercising. Like, yeah, I'm nailing it. Oh, well, maybe have a pizza and not do yoga tomorrow because that'll make me feel better you know when like, you're really on a roll with something so you go and just mess it up for no other reason other than oh uh, that's actually quite uncomfortable being so when you get to a, a limit of oh I haven't gosh this is really this is really strange this is really great but oh part of you goes no we need to keep you safe so we're just going to go three, throw a pizza and Guinness at you because that'll make you feel like shit. Well, this is what I do, isn't it? So it's a case of opening up yourself to receive more happiness every single day in every single way. And it might be that, no, you do do really well. But then, you know, you are, yeah, you're amazing. You're loving life. But then you're going to have an argument with your partner because you can't have it all, you, you know. So we go and create unhappiness somewhere um, or you get sick. Who, who, whoever goes on, like, has a week off and gets sick. Because, like, well, no, I'm, I'm used to being a hard slog, hard slog, or if I rest, there's several reasons why. It's because your body is finally resting and, you know, you're, you're right, okay, I can get ill now because I couldn't get ill before because I was working too hard, which is nuts anyway, but it's how we, um, how we are. But it's also, um, well, no, I can't have too much of a good time because that's not where my levels are happy. So we have to really tune into how much we're prepared to live in total happiness. And I get a lot of people arguing with me that, <laughs> a lot, um, saying, well, you've got to have yin and yang, haven't you? You've got to have sadness of happiness. Like, Do you know what? I've had shit loads. I will know happiness. I'm good. So I've experienced a lot of sadness. So I'm good with experiencing that. And I'm happy now not to have all of that. And when I see it, I'm happy to 
face it and go, we're not doing this. We're going to, we're going to increase capacity. And I talk about it a lot in my courses and stuff is this bubble of, of comfort. And if you look at the, I mean, the, you know, the capacity could be this bubble or the limits of, of what your, where your comfort zone will take you are the outsides of this bubble. So you're in the middle and the more you increase your awareness, you can look at your beliefs, you do clutter stuff, you do all these different things, it gets more and more uncomfortable. And then you hit the edges and you start, you know, getting sick or ending your relationship or shouting at people or you get really uncomfortable because all your beliefs are really being challenged and you can and a lot of people just shrink back into the middle again because that's easier the toughest thing is to when it gets really hard is to keep going and it's like you know like it is an old saying you know the darkest you know it's always darkest before the dawn but I, I can't it's totally correct like things feel the hardest when they're just about to be over you know, think everything gets really tough when you're hitting all these edges of all these limits you're pushing and everything's happening. And when you just go, it's like, oh, okay. you will have another one. <laughs> and as you expand, there are these, but, but you often find it's the same stuff, but a different layer and a different aspect of the stuff that's coming up. So you, the more you get to know yourself, the more you'll see your limits coming and you'll see your, ah, right, oh God, I've done this to myself again. And you'll also be more accepting. You won't start damning yourself. Oh God, I'm such an idiot. I've let that get to me again. You go, oh, okay. All right. I see. I see you. And you get honest with yourself and, and it actually gets, you know, then we start you know, I'm not saying life is is just a game, but it really is. It is a little bit. It's here to be experienced and had fun with, the same as business. And then it's amazing how much fun everybody is. But then you talk to them about business, and they go, oh. "And this is the thing: their passion, their love, their what they want to do with their life. They're very serious all of a sudden. It's like, oh, you know, business is meant to be fun. And do you know the one thing that was complete turnaround in my business was when I stopped trying to do things that everybody, the way that everyone else told me to, because it felt really hard and really like, oh, unfun. And when I started actually just doing whatever the hell I wanted because it suited me that day, I don't know, like shit happened. You know, when I stopped apologizing for me, when I stopped, I'm just gonna do that. I'm gonna charge that because I'm really good. And uh, I, 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 I shift stuff and that's really cool. I'm really good. Then everything changes. Um, but to get there, like I say, the work has to be done, not has to be done. Um, and then, then, so these are all like the different, again, like this, I've never, I've never done a masterclass like this before, by the way, but I'm just literally walking through the stages to go through. Then we have to realize our place in the universe and the laws of the land. Well, there's only about three of them, isn't there really that are real, but the laws that actually matter that make things are the laws of the universe. And now I'm, I'm, I'm like half woo woo, half really practical. So when people work with me, they'll get a load of like woo woo universal stuff and why, you know, an EFT and energy work and quantum field uh, work and things. So um, I do a lot in the field of time because time is, well, doesn't exist, does it? So we do all that and we kind of collapse time, sort it all out, boom. But a lot of it is just practical things you can do so, um, you know, when it comes to understanding it's called cause and effect is like one of the things I use every single day with like with my family and stuff is like, well, I don't punish kids. I mean, I, I make mistakes sometimes, but my, my, okay, my ideal is not to punish people or to say, oh, bribe them or say, oh, here you go. If you do this, do this. Say, it's on you. But <laughs> everything you do has a reaction. So good stuff gets a really good response and life will give you lots of good stuff. If you beat holes in your integrity, you do some shitty things, well, it's going to give you a bit more of the shitty things. So you decide. So that's how I actually choose to raise my kids, which people think is a bit mental because I don't make them do anything. But it's amazing how they do stuff because they see the effect. So if, they, if my daughter doesn't, doesn't empty the dishwasher, she has no plates to eat off. I'm not being funny. I'll wash a plate for me. <laughs> so all of us, very quickly, because I'll put the stuff in the dishwasher, she'll put, take the stuff out. Now, it took two times for her not to do it, for her not to have anything clean to eat off, but now she does her bit. Because the effect of not doing the dishwasher is that you don't have any clean plate. I mean, it's, it's not rocket science, but 
it works because and then I'm not having an argument with her every day I said can you do that bit please there's nothing to do oh shit yeah I don't have to like eat beans off my hands kind of thing I know it may sound really nuts but when we actually lean into every action you have has an effect cause and effect is like it was one of the most mind-blowing things I really lent into that every single thing every action I do is going to have an effect so the only way I change my life as in what I'm living as in my circumstance is to change what I do and how do I change and so then it all comes back to how do I change what I do I believe something different and how do I do that I work on my beliefs and how do I do that I figure out what I want so it all so that basically you can experience anything in your life you want you just have to change what you do and when I kind of really honed in on the cause and effect like I say how I parent so people think I'm mental but my kids are great they are a bit shit but on the whole they're pretty great and actually they have a big understanding of how things work because of it um and it's like when I have um arguments with my partner he's quite different to me so it does happen sometimes (laughs) um it's like well actually what do I want to create here do I want to I have to dig very deep sometimes. What, what do I want? You know, what do I want? Is this the, is my behavior now getting me the outcome that I want? You know, it, it, that's literally how to look at it uh, with relationships, with friends, with anything you're doing is what you're doing now going to get affect what you want. And it's such like a mind blowing thing. And there's 12 of these. There's 12 like really key universal laws. Um, that was one of the most mind blowing ones to really dig into for me. Um, and I teach people about, from my angle, how these laws and how the universe completely changes your life when you choose to delve in. Um, and um, one of the last things I teach people is when they know all of this is how to take control of it all because we all naturally want to control our lives, don't we? Especially when things look out of control. And I remember when I was feeling very out of control a few years ago, uh, my body was giving up on me. I I mean, from someone who hates hospitals and doctors and general authority, has to be said. Um, And and I don't have a massive faith in uh, having been brought up by my mom, who's very spiritual and things like that. I don't have a massive faith in the medical uh, you know, uh doctors traditional medicine isn't what my go-to at all not now at all but I never quite believed it because I was what I was told and I wasn't I was done to rather than you know I didn't really understand it um there I was in hospital like I had septicemia um I got very intolerant to pretty much most foods so I was very sick a lot um and I or my, my shoulder got re-dislocated had to have more shoulder surgery and my appendix burst like all in the space of a year. I mean, my body was saying, come on, come on, come on. Um, and the more I tried to control those things, the worse it got. And one of the biggest lessons I have ever learned was, was how control works and how there really isn't any way you can tr- control anything beyond here. That's it. So when someone is doing something you don't like, nothing you can do about it someone behaves in a way you don't like fuck all you can do about it that's up to them you can only control how you feel about it that's it you control how you feel about it how you react to it your response to it and what your thoughts are about it. i mean you've literally got four things in the whole planet you can control and that's thoughts and feelings um, actions and reactions and reactions is the reactions is probably the biggest one that people have to work on especially if you're I was call myself, I used to call myself, I'm just a bit fiery. <laughs> and I am fiery. But my God, I was living on this precipice of a permanent reaction. Um, and I was in a very, very kind of emotionally abusive marriage. And you can imagine every day. So living in that for some years caused my body just to start breaking. Because it physically couldn't cope with all of this kind of, this pull, push, pull, push, pull. Um, so... That's what I teach and that's what I go on a lot about is really understanding where you can get control because when you feel like you're hitting your limits and when you feel like things are getting out of control and you feel like you're pushing everything, our immediate is to go externally and try and control something or make something better or, you know, when we can't do that, 
it won't work. We need to con- we need to release control of everything else except for us. Um, and that took me quite a while to get my head around. Um, but by releasing that, it gave me quite a permission to not have attachment to it. I can't control it. Therefore, why am I trying to control the outcome of anything else except for me? That's it. I can't do that. So I can only do me. And it's quite freeing, although can be quite frustrating. Um, Because the other side of that is that everything you do is all yours. Everything you've ever done. Everything good, bad, indifferent is absolutely yours. And not many people like that. So that takes a little, I don't know if you're a therapist, you're like, when you start to say, well, you do it to yourself, you know, you're like, fuck, you know, you might go and trigger the hell out of people. Um, but, you know, um, it's, it, it's, it's very, it's empowering, but it can get people quite upset. So when we realize that actually we've created situations in order to learn from in one way or another, we chose it, or, you know, we can, do, we can choose how we you know, we can choose how we then process traumas and things. And, you know, people have had horrible things happen to them. And I'm not saying it's a fault thing. I'm saying that we get to choose how we then deal with it. Horrible things happen for whatever reasons they happen. But we, for whatever reason, at some part in our journey, we chose to be in that moment in time. And so we, the only way to release it is to, to understand that we still were there. And at some point we made the decision to be there. And so we need to forgive, outrageously forgive ourselves. Um, I could go on about forgiveness, but I think I have a very different view on forgiveness to other people. Forgiveness and gratitude, I feel quite differently about to the majority of people, I think. Um, forgiveness is, yes, yeah, so it's not, yeah, I believe we can only forgive ourselves, not other people. That's their karma and dharmic path. The karmic dharmic path is for you to forgive yourself. I don't have a right to forgive anyone else because that's not mine as well so you know um my daughter got quite badly hurt by somebody and she was like how can I ever forgive them I says maybe you don't need to maybe you just need to forgive yourself for being in the situation maybe you need to forgive yourself for holding on to that anger and that hatred and the difference was humongous because she didn't she says it wasn't okay mummy I said no it wasn't okay it was never it's never going to be okay but can you forgive you for being there can you forgive you for for holding that hate, for feeling those feelings, for for everything bad you felt about yourself. And very quickly she could, and she moved on, and she's not bothered anymore. So when you see, and when you see kids go through that, you see how simply they can do stuff. I think, oh, that's really powerful. And that really got me thinking about forgiving other people. It really isn't, in my opinion or in my experience, necessary. Or, um, it, we have to forgive ourselves because anything we feel towards somebody else. We can only feel it if we feel it about ourselves. Otherwise, it doesn't exist, does it? If we don't understand, if we don't have that emotion inside us already, we can't possibly feel it about anyone else. So when we heal ourselves and forgive ourselves, we no longer feel the need to forgive that person for that moment in time. Um, again, it's not. It's just my opinion, and it's just I suppose it's how I operate. But um, and so yeah, so. Um, the very basics of creating money and creating prosperity. Um, like I say, Mind Your Money, this program I did was so powerful because it was all healers who came on it. It was all healers and spiritual leaders and um, therapists. It was incredible. And, and both times um, I've run it, I ran it in December last year and I ran it just gone um and the stuff that came up was so humongous and like I said I'm not running it on its own I'm running it with purpose I'm creating purpose and money because I believe when people have done both of the programs one after the other they found what their true calling is let alone what they're trained in doesn't matter what you're trained in or how much training you've had when you really tune into your true purpose and it's not like well my job is to be a therapist it's like my purpose is my purpose is to inspire people to find their purpose. It's not like I mean, that's not a job description, is it? Like that's why I don't talk about EFT all the time, or I, don't, I literally talk about purpose and prosperity and creating things because that's my purpose is to help other people literally tune in and fly if that's what they want to do. 
Um, and money is a fantastic lever for it because um, it brings up a lot of crap. Um, if you're not creating the wealth you want, it's because we have a really shitty relationship with money. And what's great about working with money is it doesn't only bring up your stuff with money, it brings up your stuff with everything. Once you heal your money shit, you'd be shocked. It starts healing your relationship stuff, your food stuff, your energy stuff, your body stuff, when you start bringing money into it, because it is such a, it is such a big thing that every day we have to think about. Um, it, it, it changes everything. And that's why I've changed it from money to prosperity, because once you prosper, you prosper everywhere. Your relationships get better. Your life gets better. The roses smell better. Food tastes better. Your body, you love your body more because actually you like your body. You actually appreciate your body. You, you like what you see in the mirror. You actually start changing how you feel about everything. So, um, so yeah, so it's the first. So everybody who's at, um, done either one of those programs now gets an automatic, they automatically get both smooshed in together. I'm starting it in October. Um, because I can. So I made the decision that I wasn't going to charge any more for it either because it felt right. So um, I start in October, um, a brand new program of it. Um, the path to uh, purpose and prosperity, because it's like a lifelong thing. It's a lifelong program. It starts with eight weeks. And you can either do it all on your own. You never have to have a live coaching call with me at all. Or you can come and do a live coaching call with me with me uh, for eight weeks and then every month after. Or you can do that and you can have 12 weeks of uh, eight weeks of um, Voxer messaging. So or messenger or WhatsApp messaging where we just message back and forth and you have like coaching calls every um, every few weeks as well. So, um, yeah, so that's what I all those things I've mentioned, though, so finding out your why's, your stories, your decluttering, the upper limits and ego and bound boundaries, all these things I've touched upon and more, I walk you through when you come and start working with me in like on an eight week process. So that is, but those are the things. And the reason I told you what I work on is because I want you to, to know that that's, that's the process I use and everything I teach you could you know like everything anywhere information is available anywhere so I like to be very transparent with the kind of work I do but if you want to truly lean into your purpose and create wealth and prosperity that's what I do and um, but you can absolutely do it on your own as well it just takes longer it can be harder and it can feel and it, it's the, the 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 um when you hit those limits it can be tougher that's all, but a lot of a lot of people's journeys they do on their own. So I would basically in these masterclasses, I try and teach you as much as I can, and then invite anybody who wants to to work with me in the in a group program, which you can either do completely alone, you, know, you can just have all my videos, or you can do it with one to one stuff. So I've created it so it's really accessible for anybody, and you can like pay over twelve months because it's it's an ongoing lifetime thing. So every month after the first eight weeks, we meet up every month and go over another element of money and purpose. So yeah, so that's, um, um, and before we go though, like I said, right at the beginning, fuck, five minutes. <laughs> I'm just looking at the time. Um, all I'd like to do is just for you to really quickly tune in and do a quick future a future self thing okay so if you just put your hand on your heart and take three nice big like heart breaths <sighs> breathe in for six and out <sighs> and again <sighs> And if you literally invite you to just ask your um, soul something you want to create, just a desire you'd like to see yourself with, be that a Porsche, be that with the love of your life, be that in a big house, be that on holiday, something you would, something that you really desire in your life. Um, big, small, whatever you choose. 
And I'd invite you to tune in not only to the thing, but why, why you want this thing. What would be the feelings this thing would give you? So if it's a lovely Ferrari, is it the sound of the engine would make you feel alive? It would give you this adrenaline kit. What would it do for you? Would it make you feel special or loved or whatever it might be? Tune into the feelings why you want this thing. Okay. Has everyone got that? The feelings, really focus on the feelings inside of you. What this object or this experience would do for you. Okay, as you're bringing that into your heart, this beautiful feeling, just let your body kind of really feel all those things, okay? So you've already got it, because if you can feel it, it's already there. So I'd invite you now to just go to another point in time where you already have it, where you actually have physically manifested it into your life. And take yourself up a timeline so you can do that with the string in the universe, just go up your timeline to a moment in this timeline's future where you already have this thing is now in your life. And step in, step into that scene, step into that moment. Go and have a look at yourself. What does she look like? How does she feel? What else is around? Go and experience another version of you with this desire met, with this dream fulfilled. See what she looks like. You can ask her some questions if you like, you can speak to her. Ask who's got any words of wisdom for you. Just notice some little things around in that moment, the little things, around where is she, where's the, um, are you on stage, you're in a house, are you by a pool, just notice uh, the other things that are around. You can come here whenever you like to sort of meet this other version of you, this other now, obviously time doesn't really exist, it's already happening, we just need to pull it in. Now, all you need to do to create this version of you is to be that version of you. That's it. Is to, if when you want to create anything, the thing you desired and those feelings you wanted to create, it's actually living within those feelings. And how you become that person is just being her already. She's just another version of you with experience, with different things, with different life. But you can create that whenever you like, because you already have it, already exists. You've just seen it, therefore it exists. You felt it, therefore it exists. So the power is in your hands. How you get there is not up to you. Just get, just be more her every day. Be the version of you that has all your desires met. And then your desires get met. But you can go and have a chat with her whenever you like. <laughs> Ask her some questions. <laughs> and then just come back to the room whenever you are ready. It's only a very quick future self, but does anybody get any like icky? things come up yeah, so, yeah yeah when anything icky comes up it that's the beliefs that will stop you getting there so that's why I always when the first thing we I ever do with anybody in any program the first week we actually focus on everything we want to call in all the desires not just one but we literally go through I send you a book and it's like writing down what why what why what why what why from I want to have coffee once a week with my girlfriends to I want to have my retreat centre in the middle of the Lake District with 25 acres of land and 17 boats. You know, it could be absolutely anything. And we really create all that. And I really would implore you, if you never work with me again, to really have, I mean, I've got a diary here at the back. It's literally just what's and why's 
all down about I've got a list, two columns. What do I desire? Why do I desire it? And I cross things off in the date that I do it, that I get it as well. So one of mine was a bookkeeper. So cross that off. A VA, cross that off. <laughs> got my kids home educated, cross that off. There was things I wanted to create that I didn't even know how. Just always remember your job is not the how. Your job is the create. Your job is to to desire it, to feel it, to bring it in. How it happens, be open to opportunities, get over your beliefs, and work with people like me, uh, or me. Just work with me because I'm great. Um, <laughs> um, so um, I I hope I've given you a lot of things to think about. Um, this will be recorded I'm doing it again later on and I imagine it'll go very differently later because this is not what at all what I thought I'd talk about I didn't think I'd talk about the steps that I cover at all that's not what I ever do so I'm not sure but I don't actually I'm like, anytime I do a masterclass I have about three words written on a page and that's it that's literally how I work with everything so um <laughs> it's um yes yeah, so I'm very um, that all like, everything I do is intuitively run and when I realized that that wasn't a bad thing that I wasn't just I had very much that means I'm lazy I don't prepare anything so the minute I start preparing and writing scripts I am screwed um but I thought that that's what I thought people would think I'm lazy and judge me if I didn't prepare I was so yeah, so for me, it's a right, don't sit down too early, don't get ready too early, because if I do, I'll start thinking, and that'll fuck it all up. <laughs> so thinking tends to mess things up. So um, yeah, but then I, whoever turns up on the day, it should change everything again. So it's, for me, it's quite, um, makes a difference. And I, I tend to just say what I need, what people need to hear. I don't really know why, and I, I don't judge it anymore. So I'm hoping, whatever I've said has resonated somewhere with you. Um, I'll get you the replay as well, so you can watch me on two times if there's bits you like to get to quicker. <laughs> I now realise people do that. I never knew people did that, but now I realise people actually two times me, and I'm like, wow, that's really upsetting. <laughs> it's not really. Um, so I'll send you the, the link there. I'm also going to send you the way... Um... <laughs> Thanks, Misha. Good to see you again. Well, have you back in the wide world a bit. So Misha worked me a little bit before in one of my programs, which is cool. Um, lovely to see you again. Um, and um, I'll give you the, I'm gonna give you the link to work with me um, on um, the path to uh, prosperity and purpose. I'll send you that link as well. I'm not really a hard sell kind of person. You'll either wanna work with me or you won't. That's kind of it. So um, you'll get all the information to work with me. I'll make it as easy as possible. Um, and I'm also open to chatting with anybody about the work that I do as well. Also, it's my birthday week, it's my birthday tomorrow, <laughs> which I'm, I, for the first time in my life, I'm excited. I used to hate birthdays till last year, so I did loads of work on birthdays. Finally, I like birthdays, so I'm going to just start doing things I never do. So I never do certain things because it's just I don't want to do, offer it long term. So I'm just like making offers to people this this week. Um, so keep an eye out. Um, if you friend request me, because groups and pages, in my opinion, don't really show very much. If you friend request me, you'll get uh, I pretty much use that as my well, I show my kids, but I also show like what I do and things. So you'll get me offers. But I'm doing five days of birthday offers as well of ways to work with me in ways I never ever work so I thought that would be fun and I can do what I want so that's why I do it so um that uh, so keep an eye out for those things as well but um I'm going to sign off now but don't go if you've got any questions I can do that offline so bye-bye for the camera and I'm going to press stop now